Welcome to our mini lesson on counting principles. There are two counting principles that we're going to talk about. And the first one is the sum counting principle. And as the word indicates sum, we're going to be adding with this one. Here's a sample question. If I have three red hats and two green hats, I have three red hats and green, two green hats apparently. If I choose one hat, how many ways can I choose a hat? See, this is the type of question. So to find out the answer, I need to add them together. I have three red ways I can choose a hat and two green ways that I can choose a hat. So I have a total of five different ways I can choose a hat. This brown cowboy hat doesn't fit quite into it, but that's the way that the sum counting principle works. We're going to show another example of a sum question. On a number cube, there are three even numbers and one multiple of five. If you roll the cube, how many ways can you get an even number or a multiple of five? Okay, so it's first off telling you that there are three even numbers, one multiple of five. So it's asking you how many ways can we get either that even number or the multiple of five? Again, it's a sum question, so we're adding together. We're going to add together the even numbers, the three of them, two, four, and six, and a multiple of five. There's one option for that, and it's number five. Since these two are not the same options, right? We add them together, and we'll get a total of four different options. All right. So there are four different ways we could roll either an even number or a multiple of five. The other counting principle is known as the product counting principle. And this is how it works. This one works with um, if Jim has three pairs of pants, two shirts, and two hats, how many different ways can he dress? Um, this type of question is a little bit different. And there are two ways that we can solve this type of problem. We can't just add them together because Jim could take one pair of pants and a different shirt and a different hat, and there'd be all sorts of different options. So let's look at the different ways to solve this type of problem. The first way is that we can draw a chart. So we can draw pants number one, pants number two, pants number three. So let's say these are brown and these are black and these are white or something, I don't know. He would choose his first pair of pants and he has two different shirts. So he could choose his first pair of pants and either one of his shirts or his second pair of pants and either one of his shirts, his third pair of pants and either shirt. Now, after he's chosen a shirt, he can also choose one of two hats. So we'll add that onto there, hat number one, hat number two. To find out the total number of options, all we need to do is count the total number in this final column. Here, I've colored it in 12. So we count the total number in here. It's colored in red, sorry, and there's 12 options. Okay, This one here would be pants, shirt number one, Pants number three, shirt number one, hat number two would be that option. Right? So everyone in the final column is a different option choice. All right? The other way, the easier way, is because we notice the word here, product, we can just take these numbers and multiply them together. Three pairs of pants times two shirts times two hats. Three times two is six times two is 12. So that'd be kind of the easier way to do it when you've got a product question. Let's look at the question here. Which principle would we be using with this question? Jim has a box of coins. It has 200 pennies, two nickels, three dimes, and five quarters. By choosing one coin, how many ways can he get more than six cents? What kind of question is that? Well, that's going to be a sum question, right? Because Dimes and quarters are more than six cents. So I'm going to add together the op number of dimes. There's three dimes. And I'm going to add to that the number of quarters, which is five. Three and five is eight. So there are eight options when I, Jim reaches his hand into there that he's going to pull out something that's more than six cents. There's eight ways that he can get more than six cents. So that's a sum question. Let's look at this one. Mary Beth has three types of bagels in the fridge, two types of cream cheese, and three veggies. If she wants one of each item, 
how many different lunch options does she have? This question is using, did you guess it? It's using the product principle. So we can do this and solve it in two different ways. One, we can write out our chart. We write a bagel, different type of cream cheese, and then three different type of veggies. We count all of these options, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all the way to 18. And we know that we have 18 options of lunches available to us, or to Mary Beth, actually. Or we can do it the easy way. If anybody remembers the easy way for the product principle, it is to multiply the numbers together. So we can do three bagels times two cream cheese types times three vegetables, and that would give us a total of 18, which is the same number as we added together in the previous question. So that is, in a nutshell, what the product principle and the sum principle are. We use them for different things. I hope that this little mini lesson has been helpful, giving you a couple examples. And make sure to talk to your teacher if you've got more questions about these principles of counting. Have a wonderful day.